media are absolutely key to, to bridging the gap between science and knowledge and implementation. So it really is good to see so many of you here interested in One Health. I'm going to give just a, a brief primer about One Health and why there are actually three healths, One Health, Eco Health, Planetary Health. So I think this, this COVID pandemic, which we're still living, has really brought it home to everyone how absolutely important it is to understand health, the one health, the three healths. So one health is, is what we have heard most about. And as several of our very learned journalists and introducers have said, it is about this dependence of the three healths human health, animal, that's livestock and wildlife, and environment health, and how we can't get human health unless we get livestock, wildlife, and environment health. One Health arose in the early 2000s, following on from uh, SARS and avian influenza, and nearly everyone agrees, including FAO, WHO, and the World Animal Health Organization, that One Health is key to solving COVID. But there's another type of One Health, which is much more medicine oriented and, and less to do with zoonosis. Uh, and this has got to do as, especially with areas like comparative medicine. For example, we learned a lot about bone cancer in children by looking about bone cancer in dogs. So this is a more uh, technical aspect of One Health. And then we have Eco Health. Uh, if One Health came out of the, the zoonosis, the bird flus and the, the SARS in the early 2000s, Eco Health came out of the Amazon in the 1990s. And it was much more focused on the environment and on development. In fact, some of its earliest work was not on zoonosis, but on, on mercury poisoning uh, from water contamination. EcoHealth has got six key principles, which I think really brings it home to people and development. They are transdisciplinarity. That's the working together of multiple scientific disciplines, but also multiple communities, such as policymakers, researchers, and, and villagers. This idea of systems thinking that everything is related and you could have unintended consequences, both good and bad, if you think in linear terms instead of how everything is connected. Participation is core, that unless people, be they decision makers or, or community members, are truly involved in something, they will never, it will never be sustainable or scalable. This idea of knowledge to action. As I said, the media is key in translating our knowledge to action. Then social and gender equity, uh, common concepts, but of course, key to eco health is ecosystem sustainability, the health of the environment. The third health, a third of our one health is what's the new kid on the block, something which is called planetary health. And this again is, is very integrative and it looks at the interconnectedness between human, animal and environment health, but it's more focused on the services that nature gives us for free, but not without cost, because if we exploit nature too much, we will stop getting these services with very drastic consequences for us all. And these services include things like climate regulation, keeping our planet, our only planet, our small blue pan planet at a livable temperature, but also disease regulation. The fact that if we have biodiversity and animals and plants doing their jobs, they stop this spillover. They keep diseases in wildlife where they're not doing us any harm and things like soil and water health. So that is a third health. These healths are, are all interconnected. Here's just one diagram, putting our, our three and a few more into one in what we sometimes call the One Health Egg. We started with veterinary public health in the middle, which is where many of us came from. And we ended up with the One World, One Health, the planetary health, which is what all of us want to see. Why One Health? Why do we need it? One of the things is to get a timely response to reduce the horrible negative impacts of diseases occurring at the intersection of human, animal and environment health. This little graph shows you how if we could uh, detect and stop a disease in animals like COVID, if it could have been stopped in, in wet markets or in bats, we would have stopped it from getting into people, stopped people from getting sick and have stopped this nightmare we've been living for the last 18 months, which has cost trillions of do dollars and now millions of human deaths. 
But the other thing is how to get a more effective response. And here, One Health, Eco Health, is very strong, as I mentioned, on participation, bringing in people's knowledge. Here in West Africa, you can see some farmers who are very knowledgeable about zoonosis and animal diseases, sharing their knowledge with other community members and researchers, and together coming up with plans of how to deal with disease. Thank you all for your attention and looking forward to, con to, to continuing the conversation.